Okay, we are still in chapter 6 and now we will discuss one specific topic called the dummy variable trap. This trap is actually related to the problem of multicollinearity. For example, if we have the model of our test course, but our independent variable in the model are percentage of English speakers and also percentage of non-English speakers among our students. These two variables are actually perfectly correlated because if one is 60%, the other one is 40%. So in advance, we know that we have multicollinearity and that is perfect multicollinearity. We need to solve that problem. Solution is actually to drop one of these two variables, for example, to drop percentage of English learners. There is other example. Uh, for example, if we divide uh, our sample in three parts, that we have districts that are urban, suburban, and rural. And then, first variable will be actually, all those three variables will be dichotomous where we have two values for every variable. Urban, one if it's urban, otherwise it will be zero. So in every row, we will have three columns and we will have one times number one and two times zero. This is actually uh, uh, also, also perfect collinearity. Let's explore this example a little bit more. So we have test scores, we have student-teacher ratio, we have constant. Uh, I will explain what does that mean very soon. And we have values for urban, suburban, and rural uh, areas for every district. So we see in every row, in those three columns, we have one time num value of one and two times value of zero. So this is actually our true model. We have one, two, three, four independent variables. So we have student-teacher ratio and we have three rural three areas urban suburban and rural but also this constant is always present it is zero x x zero it is actually always related to our beta zero so we also have the value of independent variable for for uh, our constant for our intercept but its value is always one therefore we have multicollinearity because the sum of these three variables always is equal to constant. And this is why we need to drop one of these variables in order to, to develop a model. So, if these are our data, we have the problem of perfect uh, multicollinearity because this variable, x0, is uh, perfectly correlated with three other independent variables, x2, x3, and x4, actually these three variables. So we need to throw one of these three variables out in order to develop the model. But actually, we won't lose any information on that variable that we throw out. Because if we th uh, throw, throw out uh, 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 urban, it will be actually included here in beta 0. So Every time, if we have for suburban and rural areas zeros, actually we will have expected value for urban area, expected value of test scores for urban area included here in beta zero. One more example. It is very, very often, often problem that uh, with dummy variable trap. If you have two genders, male and female, so two columns with two variables, one if female zero if otherwise for males and for females of course one if it's female zero if it's otherwise so there is also a problem of perfect multicollinearity because m plus f is always one the solution is that we will exclude a male gender for example you can exclude any of these two uh, genders uh, the result will be the same and then leave only females so beta one will tell you the results for females but not only beta one male becomes the baseline in the equation so uh, theoretical value for for males is here in beta zero what does that actually means so expected value for male will be beta zero expected value of dependent variable for females will be beta zero 
plus beta 1. On the way of getting rid of perfect multicollinearity is uh, that we leave out the constant from our model. For example, here, we don't have beta 0 anymore. We have beta 1 and we have beta 2 for, for males. Beta 1 for females, beta 2 for, for males. So this is also, in that way, we also don't have any multicollinearity in our model. Third example, more explored, is if you have, for example, car sales. What is the size of the sale, the amount of sales, if you have cars with different colors? Let's say four colors, red, white, blue, and orange. We have four columns, red, white, blue, and orange cars. And if it's really red, the number will be one. In that row, all the others will be zero. But red colors will be for us the baseline. So we will won't include in the model uh, the, the sale for, for the data for, for the red cars, only for the other three. But actually, beta zero will show us the sales of the red cars. Let's look at the complete example here. So expected values are for red cars, expected value of sale will be beta zero. For white cars, it will be beta zero plus beta one. Plus for blue cars, beta zero plus beta two, because blue cars are related to, to beta two. Orange cars will be beta zero plus beta three. So we won't lose any information about the red cars. Uh, if you want to, uh, to check if there are, for example, a uh, uh, difference in the sales of white cars comparison with the blue car, it is very easy to, 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 to check it. Just we need to test the hypothesis, and this is the next factor. How will you test those hypotheses? Whether beta 1 is equal to beta 2. If they are statistically different, then we can conclude that there is a statistically significant difference in the sales of white cars in comparison with the blue cars. Okay, this is the end of presentation.